it's a slap on the face. You know, we are uh, in the midst of a crisis. We see it every day. Biden was not coming to see the reality of the border. He was coming to see a sanitized, a clean El Paso. What was the price that they promised them to be exactly. able to clean this up and make Biden look good? All right, in uh, El Paso, Texas, that was an El Paso, Texas resident who is furious uh, at President Biden after his tour of the border town on Sunday. Locals saying the president didn't see the full extent of the crisis there because many of those migrant camps were torn down just before he arrived. Joining us now is Javier Palomares, president and CEO of the United States Hispanic Business Council. Javier, thank you very much for coming back on the program. Uh, our viewers really... I appreciated you the last time you joined us. Um, you're incredibly passionate about what is happening there. You've placed a lot of urgency on that, sir. Um, what did you make of the president's visit, first of all? Is this going to help anything? Well, you know, I have to say that uh, I've been critical of this administration's handling of that crisis. And after months of myself and others calling for, for the president to come down to the border and visit the Americans who are suffering through this crisis, he finally came. So credit where credit is due. But honestly, a three-hour scripted, sanitized visit, that's not a solution. That's a photo op. And uh, we're calling for a lot more than this. Uh, you know, he, uh, he, he, I understand that, that Joe Biden didn't create this problem. It's not his fault, but it is his responsibility. Really interesting. Uh, this is the White House description of the president's new border policies, imposing new consequences for individuals who attempt to enter unlawfully, uh, expanding legal pathways for safe, orderly, and human migration. Uh, they also say the surge, um, the, the securing surge resources to secure the border, disrupt criminal smuggling networks, and supporting border communities. Will any of this help? You know, I, 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 I think it may help. Uh, policy is one thing, enforcement is another. Um, you know, this notion of sending 30,000 uh, migrants back to Mexico uh, is a drop in the bucket. Uh, it'll help, and right now we'll take any help we can get, but it's a drop in the bucket compared to the 1.5 million who are already here awaiting processing. In addition to that, we've got 600,000 people claiming asylum. That process alone is, is, uh, is estimated to take up to four years to clean up. What are we going to do with these people in the meantime? And at the same time that this is happening, our farmers are suffering. Last year, we lost 10 million tons of crops that went unharvested because we couldn't get people to, to, to harvest those crops for us. So we need the president's attention. We need some thoughtful uh, resolution to this, something that's sustainable, that'll help the American people and the American economy. This is Senator James Langford on what he says the president did not do with this border visit. He didn't meet with the Border Patrol Union, or he didn't meet with the landowners in the area. He didn't get a chance to be able to meet with migrants. This was a staged event that he brought in on Sunday to say, look, I went, right. but he's not actually going to try to say what needs to be fixed. Sort of echoing the comments that we've heard from you just now. Um, you've reached out to the White House. I mean, are you in communication with the president and his team at all about these issues? We are to some extent, but the reality of it is, you know, they want to listen to the people they want to listen to. And listen, I get it. Joe Biden has the toughest job in the world. But let's not forget, he asked for this job. We gave him the job, and now it's time for him to do the job. This is a difficult a very, uh, you know, it's going to take some thought. It's going to take some leadership. He's going to have to reach across the aisle. Not a single Republican was, was invited to that visit. Where were our two senators in Texas? Where were the Texas uh, Republican uh, members of Congress? You know, we need a leader that understands the issue, that's talking to the Americans on the border, the farmers, the, the doctors, the nurses, the, the police officers, the teachers, the Americans that are suffering through this crisis. They will best inform his strategy for how to move forward, not his insulated, Ivy League educated, uh, you know, circle of six. He needs to get beyond that and talk to real Americans about how we move forward here. Javier, I've only got a couple seconds left, um, but I know people are listening to you very closely, um, what you're saying right now. And, and by the way, the last time you joined us, we certainly didn't ask, but you volunteered that 
that you voted for President <laughs> Biden, that, that you were one of those that put him in office. And you also said um, at the end of the, the last interview we had with you that Democrats are going to make a Republican out of you <laughs> over this border crisis. Has there been any change there? I mean, do you... Do you, do you go ahead. Sad, sadly, there has not. I, I'm waiting for Joe Biden to step out of the inner circle, to, to step out of the beltway and deal with the American people, hear from us, hear from Republicans that are on the border that are suffering through this. It can be done. This is his moment. He can illustrate that he's the leader that he promised he was going to be. Well, hopefully he reaches out to you because you are in touch with a lot of people that are directly affected by this, sir, and you're welcome to come back anytime. Thank you very much, Javier. God bless for having us. All right. Appreciate Tom. it.